Here we are. Okay. Well, since this is happy hour, I'm going to take a sip and uh, happy hour. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers for sure. Cheers. Okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. That took forever. That was like a complete user issue. The user being me um, trying to figure out how to get this thing to live stream. <sighs> So I am so excited to have this conversation. I have been super giddy all day up until like 15 minutes ago when I figured out that I couldn't get the whole technology thing together, but I'm back, I'm back to myself. And so I get the opportunity to hang out with six of my favorite, favorite girls to talk about a topic that we all talk about all the time, which is the topic of relationships, dating, and all the crappity crap that uh, you know we're all trying to work through in order to have the great relationships that we all wanna have. And so, and I've had this conversation over libation and over tears sometimes and over like, laying on the floor laughing with um, with all of you, small groups of you and one off with all of you. And I wanted to share some of that and share some of you know our girlfriend time with the Shaping Freedom group. And so before we move on, I wanted to introduce each one of you. And a couple of you asked me to share like what my questions were going to be or what we, you know, more specifics about what we were going to talk about. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted us to chat just like we do normally. So I'm going to introduce each, each one of you. And what I'm going to ask you to do just to kind of warm us up is to answer a couple of short, quick questions. Mm. One of them, I'm digging for a pen. One of them being... Uh, Favorite romantic song? Mm. Okay, let's start with that. Your favorite romantic song. And as I'm talking and kind of stalling, I'll give you a chance to think about that. <laughs> and then I want you to share one word. And it can be like literal or just, you know, a little more um, abstract, a word to describe your feelings or where you are about romance right now. Okay. You all got that? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do this in uh, the order that I see you. So Shade. Oh God. No. <laughs> Shade is, um, a, uh, a dear friend of mine who I've known since she was a little, little girl. And she's grown yeah. into this amazing woman. And uh, Shade is uh, one of my daughter Jessica's very best friends. And I know they hate to say it, but somehow or another, she's also wound up uh, to be my friend. So Jessica and I fight about <laughs> her all the time, fight over her all the time. So Shade, why don't you tell just tell a little bit about yourself. Give me the one the word and give me your favorite romantic song. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm a real estate agent based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, originally from New Jersey. Um, went to college at Clark Atlanta University. And upon graduation, I decided to stay in Atlanta because of the opportunities and the connections that I've made here. Um, what else? I'm single. <laughs> Did you talk about relationships? I've been technically single for five years, um, but been in a situation ship for four. <laughs> but technically, I'm single and I, I'm dating myself right now. So that's the journey that I'm on. Um, one of my favorite romantic songs, let me think. One of my favorite songs is I Want You by Marvin Gaye. It's like my all time fave. I'm a millennial, but I love old school music. So I'll say that song. And there's another song that I really, really like. I can't remember the name. Actually, I do. It's by Bruno Mars. It just came out. Vaden, you know the song, don't you? I know you know the song. That new song with Bruno Mars. 
the soul sonic what are they called now the group one it's like oh leave the door open leave the door open yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i like that song as well but i want to choose like my ultimate fave um so my word for my what was the question again my word for just the word to describe where you are right now in terms of romance hot girl summer no i'm just kidding <laughs> all right no that's good is that it um, no, that's not the word. Um, I would like to say, really, it's a self-love journey. So I would just have to say self-love and just learning how to date myself, like I mentioned earlier, instead of dating other people. Um, I think this year and the years going forward, I'm doing all the things I want a man to do for me, but I'm doing it for myself. So I'm spoiling myself, taking myself on dates, taking myself on shopping sprees, taking myself on vacation. So self-love journey that's what it is self-love nice we like that (laughs) okay next person in my uh hollywood square is uh janelle so (laughs) janelle and i have been friends we were our former 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 colleagues we worked together um many years ago now many many years and i know janelle and i have been friends for i don't know like almost 20 years at this point um she's from the east coast and she'll share all that with you and um we've had lots of fun together over the years a ton of fun and i purposely put all my cut up friends on this um just just to level set expectations i very purposefully put my cut up friends who um who like to have fun and who are up to a whole lot of things who play hard and work really hard and also have a, you know, some very interesting perspectives on the whole dating and romance thing. And so Janelle and I, again, have been friends forever. And, uh, and I asked her to join because she's freaking hilarious and, um, and very wise, incredibly wise and very, very funny. So like the perfect balance of both. So Janelle, what's your word? What's your sexy song? And what's your current situation? My word. Oblivious. That's the word for the day. Oblivious. I would say lost a year, but it wouldn't matter. And um, my song is Stay. Stay with me or Stay by DeBarge. Sing, sing a few bars. Oh, for us. you don't want me to sing. I do. I never, you ne- you've never known me to be a singer. I know, but I don't know the song. Uh, stay with me. I got what you need. You know, it's really high pitch. I can't reach that yeah, unless you kick me. You got to kick me in order for me to reach that note. Nobody else knows that song. That. Am I the okay, only does anyone? I think so. I mean, I know all the barge. So, I mean, I know all their music. I'm sure I do sing it. Stay so. with me. I can't sing it. I can't. I, I'll give us a verse. Give us a line. I can't. Sing. I don't remember. I don't remember oh, yeah, the word. Stay with me. Okay. Well, let's stay by DeBarge. Maybe someone can DeBarge. like pull it up and play it for us. Okay. So that's. Your... Go ahead. Let me hear. Okay. Okay. I know that. <laughs> the sun. Don't play me. Nice don't play me. I, I, don't, play I, I don't intend to. I know <laughs> you, we're the same age. Don't play me. <laughs> I will not. I will not. I promise. I promise. So oblivious is your word. Stay is your song. Yeah. What Tell us you? a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? What's up for you? What's going on? So I live in Jersey City, New Jersey. I've been in New Jersey since 97. Grew up in Connecticut, went to UConn, have a degree in psychology. I'm an executive coach. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's really about it. Okay. Excellent. Uh, okay. Virginia. <laughs> Hello. The hot seat. <laughs> the hot seat. Mm-hmm. It's not hot. It's just warm. We're just warming up a little bit. <laughs> So my word for today, I would say, is um, excited. <laughs> I've been writing all day, and that's, to me, exciting. <laughs> so 
that's the kind of love life I'm having right now. The kind uh, that Sade was talking about, um, self-care, uh, self-love. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing this out of order. And um, my, what, what's next? Do, do, does it matter the order? Or nope, nope. Going? Okay. Just say hello, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then my favorite song, I mean, that changes all the time, but probably some of the classics, Fallen, Alicia Keys, and of course, Let's Get It On, Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Are you just going right for it? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Like, <geez. laughs> There's no seduction. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> right? <Let's go." laughs> it's probably because I've been in that, um, uh, what, five years of, um, Absence, just put it all out there. Damn. (laughs) Okay. Well, listen, listen. It's okay. You go ahead and go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Unplanned. (laughs) Okay. Pandemic is ending, so all bets are off. (laughs) Okay. Are you, are you, um, someone's going to have to get their affairs in order when they meet you. (laughs) Right. Okay. That's okay. Nice, <laughs> Virginia's on the prowl. Janelle's oblivious. Shade's in a situation ship. We're going to come back to that. No, Nicole. I that. <laughs> Nicole. I didn't Hello. say prowl. <laughs> I, know, I, I said that. I said Energetically, that. you said it. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Nicole. Hello. I, uh, I live in San Diego. I'm an entrepreneur. I have two companies that I run. I'm a single mom. I have two kids, a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old. And my current dating situation is that I was empowering an independent lifestyle for several years, went through the dating myself phase, super glad I did. And more recently, like over the last year, I've really been determined and committed to finding the love of my life. And I have had a lot of experiences and a lot of uh, drunken nights discussing those experiences, uh, which is probably why Lisa invited me to this. (laughs) And (laughs) right now I am seeing someone who I like, but it's very, very new. So I'm like going through that part of it. And I would say my word, my dating word is vacation. Yay. Like I want vacation energy, you know, like fun and laid back and just like, yeah. And then my favorite romantic song is You Are by Lionel Richie. I just love that song. I think it's so endearing. Sing a little bit of it. You are the sun, you are the rain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's foolish game. Yeah, mm. that song. I'm going to add that to Spotify. I love, I love you so. And, I and I'll do it, it all again, again and again. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> Bid hen. All right. I'm going to start with song because this is the most challenging part. Do I it. Like Virginia, my song always changes, but um, there are definitely some staples. I, I'm i a big Sade fan. No pun intended here, Sade. I'm also a big Sade of this, <laughs> this Sade. I'm a big fan of hers as well. But uh, <laughs> so my choice is going to be No Ordinary Love. Um, Ooh, that's a good one. That's yeah, a good one. The schmoody, schmoody one. And then there's, um, so I'm Cuban. My my mom had, she was just like a big, like love song ballad person. But there's this one song by La Lupe, which is a Spanish song, but it's called um, Que Te Pedi. And it's just like very angry. And you got to like, sing some of it. You know that. Oh, I don't want to sing it. <laughs> you got to sing it or put it up on Spotify. I don't know. I will share the Spotify link. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Hold on. But basically she's like, I, you know, I didn't ask you for much, you know, just the sun and the moon and the stars. That's all. It's just, it's that sounds crazy. like me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me too much. Just give me everything. Yeah. Very sultry. Okay.
It's very, very old. It's like from the 60s or something. So it takes a while. Nothing but loyal comprehension. Have you ever made out to that song? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I've mostly like broken up and then played the song. It's more that way. Yeah. Okay. And that's your favorite song? It's one that's of my your favorites. sexy song. Okay. And what's your current situation? <laughs> I'm in a relationship uh, currently. Ooh, ooh. Yes. Um, okay. What else was there? Okay. A word, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. The word right now, hmm. I think the word right now is, dang, is it like a dating related word or just? No, just energetic? the word that just energetic, the energetic word, the word that encompasses how you are feeling these days energetically with regard to romance. Ah, easy. I think that's the word and not in the, <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> I have a dirty brain, so easy, that went south easy. really fast. <laughs> okay. But in the context of this conversation, things are easy. Okay, easy. Sailing. Cool. Yeah, and okay. then I'm in San Diego as well. Um, I'm a designer and creative director for Lisan and many other beautiful people. So, yeah. You also co-founded Come Through San Diego. Yes. <laughs> I just started yeah. a creative agency this um, in the last year and yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with creatives and collaboration. And going back, Nicole founded the Sash Bag. So whenever I post those photos and you always see me with like the strap thing around my shoulder, um, that is a Sash Bag. Uh, Nicole McDonald is the founder of that. Shade is an incredible realtor in um, Atlanta. Uh, you can find her on Instagram under sold by Shade. Yes. Uh, Janelle Jones is a, we actually met working in for a fortune 500 company. Uh, and she was the uh, head of I was going to say diversity, and I know that that's not true. I don't know why I would say that. Um, she <laughs> she is a, a former. I know. Why would I say that? <laughs> a former executive in uh, in talent acquisition, and um, just like this phenomenal badass who uh, did all the corporate things, and then a few years ago decided that she was going to take all that amazing experience that she has and wisdom and put it into developing a, um, an executive coaching business, which she's been doing for a few years. She is amazing, amazing. Um, silly as hell um, and can flip a switch and go into straightening your life out with you in a moment. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for her. <laughs> and lots of Tina foolery in that box right there. Virginia, is the founder of Epic North County, which is a local magazine that focuses on sustainability and uh, spirituality. And uh, Virginia is one of those people who lives generosity on all levels. She is the first person to support you and talk you up and uh, help you to succeed. That's just you know, what's flowing through her veins. And it's a beautiful thing to experience and to witness. Uh, Virginia, you also just started something else. What is that? Let's see. Um, I also started a, um, a retreat part of our business and, um, and another publication that's um, not launching yet. So. Okay, well, there you go. I just, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy is a dear friend of mine. And I just have to say, so Amy, Nicole, and I are all Virgos. And so when the three of us get into the room, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> Amy uh, it lives here in California as well. And she is this incredibly 
connected woman. She's silly as heck and wise and funny and uh, just this like, just this incredible energy of fun and love and vulnerability mm. and authenticity that feels really good to be around. She's also a matchmaker. Um, but he, she's in the girlfriend realm here, but we are going to hit her up for some matchmaker talk because um, we know you have stories upon stories upon stories. Um, <laughs> and so um, I feel like I've known Amy forever. Uh, so Amy. All right. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me on here. I feel so privileged. Um, uh, um, let's see. What are we doing first? Word? whatever you um, want listen my word right now it's it's in a positive way but it's Do untouchable it. it's untouchable and that's like kind of that. how I feel yeah like I, I'm I'm in this mood right now like I'm up here and I'm doing me and I'm good with I'm good without you know one day I want the next day I don't and it feels like it's a good place to be at so that's that's where I'm feeling I'm feeling untouchable um okay favorite song I think like everybody like it goes back and forth but right now like I am so it's all Anthony Hamilton and it's do you feel me because Ooh. yes right now that just gets deep in my soul I'm just I like listening that. to it constantly and so okay. but that just that is my mood right now I mean do you feel okay. me you know is it getting through to you I mean that's that's it right there so that's it that's a good one mm -hmm. that, that's all me right now so okay and what's your current situation my current situation I have no situation I have a couple two or three situationships but that's you know that's exactly like I said I, I have people I talk to and you know that's I'm enjoying that I'm enjoying that freedom to do that one day okay. like I said I want more and the next day I don't so I think I'm in a good place you know I'll work that out eventually okay all right I live vicariously through all my matchmaking clients <laughs> so what does a matchmaker do? Let's talk about that. Since this is about relationships and dating and cycles and all that, let's just get right to it. So oh. what does a matchmaker do? Let's start there. Because I know a lot of folks want to find the perfect person, the person who is their perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there's anyone who has the end all be all like silver bullet for how to make that happen. We're all going through our journey and figuring it out along the way. Um, uh, but I think there are some things that we can be thinking about as we're, you know, walking down that path. So tell us about a matchmaker and then we'll get. Sure. I think, I think part of the, my favorite part of my job is getting to know people and getting to know them. Um, and I think I talked to you about this, getting to know them who they are and where they are. And sometimes I don't need to know where you've been. I think to meet somebody and to know them, you know, without knowing their background, without having to know what you've been through, not to have the entire story, but for me to look at you and to meet you in the place that you are. And for me to just feel your energy and, and not have to know all the backstory about everything is amazing. And I think that helps me whenever I'm looking for matches that I'm able to match people with who I've met and to see you in the place that you're at at that moment and to match your energy with people um, that, ha that have the same energy. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think the same, the same thing. I'm not looking into their entire backstory. Maybe I don't know everything about them, but I, I know where they are at that moment. And that's it. That's how I operate anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, so since I asked all of you, and this is not a panel, it's a conversation, it's feeling panel-y, and let's move it into girlfriendy. Um, okay, my favorite song of all time, Luther Vandross, Radio City Music Hall, Love Won't, Make, Let, Love Won't Let Me Wait, is the sexiest song for me. Can you sing it? Um, sing it. <laughs> Share a line for us youngins. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, That's what happens when you get home with girlfriends. Um, <laughs> love, I'm, I'm going through it. Love won't let me wait. wait. Mm -hmm. 
But then Luther does it in like a whole sexy kind of way. <laughs> in a Luther way. He does way. a whole, in a Luther way. And he's Luther like, way. Whoa, 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 doing all that stuff. So it is an incredible song. Turn it on, light a candle, take a shot and go for it. I'm telling you, okay? It's <laughs> happening. If you, if you, I'm telling you, it's a serious Calm song. Down. Yeah. So it's Love Won't Let Me Wait, but it has to be the Radio City Music Hall concert version. Mm. Luther Vandross. Um, my word right now is dance. And so dance is my song, of the, my word of the year and my commitment at the beginning of the year that I was going to dance through this year. I was gonna ebb and flow and I'm gonna dance depending on what the rhythm actually called for. And I've been dancing all year. Um, I've met someone. I'm in a relationship with someone. <laughs> this is the first time I'm saying it. It feels just how red I got. <laughs> We're all clapping. Um, yes, like so I have that one. Let's cheer! Let's cheers to Lisan yes. having a guy, uh, an incredible guy, um, and that's all I'll say about that. Um, yeah. So my word is dance. My word is dance. Uh, just dancing and flowing and whatever that means and. All of you, everyone that's on here knows that I love to dance. I love music and life is about melody and tone and cadence and all that. So that's how I'm feeling these days. Okay, so we've gotten through all the inch, all the introduction thing. That was forever. Um, let's get down to it. So Shade, you talked about a situationship. You don't have to yes. get into the specifics of your situation, obviously, but what is a situationship? What is that? Great question. Um, my opinion of a situationship is a situation with another person and there's no commitment that's agreed upon. There are no titles. You're just having fun. Um, feelings are involved, but there's no actual commitment. You're not going around saying this is my lady or my man or my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my partner. It's just two friends having fun with string attached. <laughs> That's what that okay. is. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's. I, I don't recommend those types of situations. What I recommend is what Amy was saying. Just one day you want to give it your all and have fun. The next day you don't want to be bothered. I prefer that type of situation than getting into um, a three-year, four-year, however many year situation, and there, you don't know where you guys are going. And I feel like you go through more in situationships than you do in relationships. Mm -hmm. You have the worst arguments with people that you're not committed to. Why? <laughs> because be it's, like I don't that. know. It's yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> it'd be like that. Um, Is that because you're like, yeah, I can get in a situationship with no strings attached, but then your feelings are involved? Is that what it's about? Yeah, and I think from a female perspective, like you have so many expectations and then the other, the partner on the other end may promise some things, but you have to remember in the beginning, they just said, well, I'm just looking for a friend right now. I'm just looking to have fun. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm down for that too. And then months down the line, you really like this person. They already told you they're not looking for a relationship. And I'm a cancer, so I'm an empath, and I'm sensitive and emotional, and I get in my feelings. So I tend to put expectations on people who already promised me something completely different. You know, I want to talk about that. Let's talk about that for a minute, right? Because I can't, I've had so many conversations where we as women get into these situations, and this isn't like a female thing necessarily, and if there are some yeah. guys, they can speak up, but you know, these situations where we get in with a person, there's like a clear conversation and then we kind of go in a different direction because we think that we can just change mm -hmm. the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Or we're like, well, he said he doesn't really want a relationship, but I think I can convince him otherwise. Yeah, let me show him that I'm really wifey material. Like that's how it goes. <laughs> Or I've been in situations where in the beginning we said we're looking to be in relationships 
and we're looking to make it work. And then it's kind of like a manipulative thing that some people do. Well, they'll be like, yeah, I'm interested. Let's see where it goes. And then it never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. It just goes and it goes. It just goes and it goes. So and let's so talk one about day that. somebody wakes up and they're like, wait, what am I doing? I just wasted six months out of my life or a year out of my life. <laughs> uh huh. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about like when guys say one thing and then we decide that it's something else. I just want to say maybe this is the Scorpio in me, <laughs> but I'm usually on the opposite side of this where people try to pigeon me pin me down to some sort of like commitment and then I'm like mm, I don't like this <laughs> and then I'm like the free flying like mm, I don't know we'll we'll see where it goes <laughs> so, I so Viet Hen is a life ways. path number five Viet Hen is a life path number five that's how she lives in all areas of her life I'm, I'm glad so you said sure. that Viet Hen I know that I, I I'm glad you said that because I do the I feel like I do the same thing. I feel like I need to take my time. <laughs> Don't rush me. <laughs> Don't rush me. Yeah. I've been on both ends. So I've been the one that was someone wanted a relationship like in the first week. And I'm like, wait, hold on. I don't know your middle name yet. Wait, slow down. <laughs> but then I've also been on the other end where it's like, okay, the other clock is ticking. I'm approaching 30. I'm ready. <laughs> So I've been on both ends of it. And I, yeah. I feel in my perspective that I tend to want the people that don't give me enough mm. more than the people who's ready, willing, and able to like jump the room right now. And then I'm like, wait, I'm not ready. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it goes both ways for sure. Yeah. I think there's kind of an in-between thing too. Like, um, I mean, if someone wants to commit too fast, I just, I can't, I mean, that's just not, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, so, I mean, I don't, yeah. And then, um, and if someone's like says right up front, I'm, I'm just looking to play, then I tend to say, ah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think, I mean, I've noticed with myself and just in this conversation and people I know that it's not black and white. It's not like, men are this way and women are this way and women mm -hmm. want relationships and men don't and everyone in their own journey might have times where they're the one who is pushing the relationship and then they're the one that's like backing away and yet some somehow the perception is that the women are the ones who are pressuring or want the relationship even though that's not always the case and so mm -hmm. I wonder if it's just the communication styles of like men versus women uh, and the way that we have conversations and the way they have conversations that it's just the perception is different, but the reality is that we're all do the wacky, same wacky stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. I think there, I think there are times where I've spoken to men who complained about something that was happening with their lady. Right. And they're like, Oh no, she's like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the problem? He's like, I don't even know. Okay. What was the last thing she said? Well, she wanted me to do blank. And it's like, well, have you responded to that? And the guy's like, well, oh, you know, but then I've also had the opposite where I've had conversations with female friends who were just like, well, I want to be in a relationship and I love him and he's my guy. And it's like, okay, what did he say? Well, he said he's not ready for a relationship. Well, he said it, you know, so I think it kind of goes both ways where sometimes we want something so badly that we're not willing to, it's like, we don't trust the situation enough to hear what a person says and to allow people, to, a person to kind of speak their heart and say what's really on their mind, you know? Lisa, and I think you told me a while ago, you said you have to pay attention to what they say. Because if you listen to what they say, they literally told you everything that you need to know. Everything. And then I've been, I've been in a, a point in my life where I was not listening to anything they said. I was listening to myself. I'm mm -hmm. like, no, he doesn't feel that way. No, I mean, I know he said that, but he didn't feel that way. Definitely. <laughs> and so I had wonderful. to take a step back and be like, wait, no, he literally told me every answer to every question yeah. to myself or ask a friend. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. But, it's but like I do think that. Sorry. Janelle, Would go ahead. Be ahead. No, go uh, ahead. I was just going to say, 
you know, I do think that there's, there is something else afoot, right? I don't know how many of you have been accused of having a wall. I have that. You're welcome. And what happens is um, men will do what it takes to get past the wall because they want to understand what's on the other side. So there's a lot of things that are done and said in courtship to get a woman to drop her wall. And once the wall is dropped, they then may pull back because they go into their normal pace, whatever that might look like, right? So it's a little bit of, um, it's not a what you see is what you get. It's, a, it's an intensified courtship okay, now she's comfortable with me. Now I can pull back and, and really be myself, which has typically left me saying, what just happened, right? I spent all this time being courted and being pursued. And now that I'm comfortable, I don't hear from him nearly as much as, as I used to, right? So I, I typically get a little confused with that. And then the flip side of that is I think that we fall in love with potential more than the person. And so many times we have been in love with something that absolutely did not exist, never existed, which is a big problem, right? Because when you're dating online, you're dating a construed personality, which can turn into a big Seinfeld episode when you finally do meet the person, which I have, I have certainly had. Um, and so, you know, it does, it, there are some things that men will say that are, are a bit confusing and it could be because of our own challenges that they're trying to break through. And it could be because of uh, what, what we think we see. Um, so, I mean, I, I, yes, I think they can sometimes say exactly what they mean. They can be very simple beings. I do believe that, but I do believe that there are some other things that are at foot that can be confusing for women. So are you saying that you believe that men, in your experience, that men kind of are focused on the pursuit and that they believe that once they've attained that, that they think that they can kind of pull off and pull away from that? I don't know that it's like a, I think that, I think they get comfortable and then they go to a different pattern of behavior, which is probably what they normally do when they're seeing someone it you know um and and if they feel as if it's okay i've gotten past her wall now it's going a little too fast let me pull back because it's going too fast mm -hmm. right that could be a piece of it also um so i do think that there's a bit of a dance and i think that there can be confusion on both sides Okay. I feel like you just opened like five cans of worms with that one. I know, right? Yeah. That's I Janelle. Say, where do we begin? Janelle. That would be your Janelle. Point. Here we go. Poof. Right. <laughs> to your point, Discuss. I watched the video literally yesterday. My therapist, I have a therapist. Did you just say said, discuss, yes. Janelle? <laughs> and she told, oh, go ahead, shut it. This, she told me to watch this YouTube video and to know exactly what you just said. It, it's a form of narcissism. And that's what my therapist told me that they said the, the N word, the N word, they pursue the person. Then when they get comfortable, they fall back. And then when the other person starts to become unresponsive or become distant, then they try to like woo you again to pull you back again. And this therapist said that they, they tend to be like rubber bands. So they'll stretch to a, a certain amount of potential, but they always bounce right back to who they naturally are. And the, these people that we fall for their potential, they never actually, like you said, they never reach their potential. So it's a misconstrued personality that we're falling for. Um, but it's definitely, I think they said it was like malignant narcissism or something like that. But yes, yeah. serious. I've never serious. diagnosed the men that I've dated now. I know what's wrong with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Janelle, when here's you the thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, when you were sharing, what came to me was, as you were sharing your experience, I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder what Janelle is doing to attract these men who are attracted to walls. Yes. And, and then as soon as you're letting your wall down, it's like, 
the attraction like is uh, disrupted because there's something about that wall or that lack of like vulnerability or connection that they're attracted to. Um, so that's what came to me. And, I, and that's something that I relate to um, because I've experienced it. And so for me, it's been a practice of like bringing my, like not having a wall in the first place, right? Like being authentic and vulnerable and just like revealing the uncomfortable things and being in that vulnerable space, like from the get go so that there isn't a wall to break down. So that initial connection is either like on or it's off. Mm. So how do you do that, Nicole? Oh, super easy. You just do it. <laughs> um, it's, it's how lots do you of like, that? texting how do you like girlfriends go before. No, I mean, I really, for me, it's like, I have a support system um, of people who reflect things to me. You know, my, my friends and my coach who will tell me anything, like whether I want to hear it or not about how I'm showing up, you know? And so setting an intention of how you want to go, like for me, before I go on a date, I do this clearing process where I literally just like clear out any, it's a whole like three-step process that I learned in my coaching program, but, um, you know, to clear out like any residue that I'm hanging on from the day or a date that I had last week or anything like that. So I'm going in with really fresh energy and then just, you know, really utilizing my support structure of my girlfriends too. So you got to share the three-step thing, Nicole, because that's what everybody is like, okay, what's the, mm-hmm. how? Share. Yeah. So it's, it's essentially just, um, writing down all of your thoughts, feelings, and sensations. So any complaints that you have about the world, about people, about it's hot outside or it's cold outside or anything. And just like getting that all out. And then um, the second step is making a statement about each one of them, like making an I statement. And then the third one is like acknowledging that none of that stuff is real, right? Like none of it's real. Almost everything that we think and feel is an interpretation or it's about something else or someone else. So just acknowledging that and then setting an intention. So choosing the word. So you do that before every date? Before every first date, at least. Okay. And that clears the energy around the, like whatever might be in the way of you being able to connect to that person. And I started doing this after I had several dates in a row where I got feedback that I was intimidating. (laughs) And so I was like, you really, that always shocks me. Like what? Um, so I was like, gosh, I've got to figure out a way to tap into my flirtiness. Cause I'm flirty and I'm fun and I'm sweet, you know, but I wasn't showing up that way. I was like, I had this one guy actually ask me if, if we were having a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want to be in three to five years? <laughs> oh, Short term, long term uh, goals. I know, I know. Great so weaknesses. Like, so that's just my personal process to like just show up in the way that I want to with intention instead of just like going from one thing to the next. And now I'm on a date and I'm like talking to this person. I'm like, what's your deal? You know? (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So how do you prepare for a date? Does anyone else have like a preparation kind of thing for a date? Amy, how do you prepare for a date? You don't want to ask me that. I shave my legs. That's as far as it gets. I asked you that. Okay. That's it. You shave your legs. Amy shaves her legs. Okay. Anybody else? Listen. That's awesome. I That's love good. it. Listen, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It I listen, on what so, I'm listen, I know. It depends I'm on just saying. You know, medium sexy or super sexy panties. I'm Anyways, just saying. I'm just saying that's right at my point. So I'm not actively dating. So I'm actually learning. Remember I'm, I'm the untouchable stage. I'm actually learning from you all who are actively dating. So I have some input on other things, but yeah, the dating part, probably not so much. So skip me on that one. Okay. Well, there right. we go. How do we, other than Amy, prepare for first date besides shaving your legs? <laughs> I get I put, super uh, shy. I put on this. Oh, go, go ahead. You go first. <laughs> All right, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sade. Um, I get super shy. And so mm. um, I found myself also, what Nicole was saying, 
um, I haven't been on a date in a really long time, so I'm trying to remember, but anyway, <laughs> that I wasn't showing up the way I knew I could show up. So um, getting like super shy was seen as a wall. So I've had that experience that Janelle has had. And um, so what I started doing is just dancing and really trying to get into- um, Get loose. Get loose and get out of my head, you know, just get into my body more. And I don't shave anything before a first date. <laughs> because <laughs> you get into trouble <laughs> you exactly shake. there's an expectation <laughs> that a, how do you prep um, for a first date girl i put on my sexy playlist um and i try to like dance in the mirror and model in the mirror to try to feel myself get a little confident and then take a shot on the way out so that it's not like an interview because normally I'm the one asking for where, where are you going to be in three or five years? What's your family like? How are you and your mom and your dad? So to make it more conversational, I took a shot. <laughs> okay. Someone on this live uh, gave me that advice once. Which they were like, take a shot. I was nervous. And they were like, take uh, a shot. Take a shot. It was Amy, wasn't it? It sure was. <laughs> 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 not me. <laughs> Not I. Sure, well, she's like, girl, just take a shot. Did you save your legs? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your legs. Take a shot. Um, okay. I have two topics that I want. Are we all good on time? Let me just ask that out of respect for our lives. Okay. I have two topics that came up that I want to kind of throw and toss on the table that we can kind of unpack. Unpack is a word I learned from Viet Hen. Um, <laughs> I have three things I want to talk about. Shit. Okay. And I ran out of champagne, but anyway, okay. Narcissism, mm. the term wifey material, got it, Viet Hen. And um, something that I learned recently about what women want and what men want. Mm. So which of those three, I'll let you all, you ladies decide, which of those three topics do you want to go into? Narcissism, what, what, what wifey material, what is that it? The wants yeah. one. Yeah. Last one. Okay. Last Learn one. this from Tony Robbins recently, which I loved. It really resonated with everything that I have observed. So here's what he has to say. He says that women, there were three U's for women, U as in the alphabet letter. And he says that the reasons why women go 180 on a relationship is because the three U's have happened. They feel unseen, not understood or unsafe and or unsafe, okay? Mm -hmm. For men, he says that men, there are three C's that turn a man away from a relationship. And they are that he feels criticized, that he feels that he believes that you've closed yourself off to him, or that he feels controlled. What do you all think of that? Can you just um, say yes. that one more time? I need to write this down. Okay, <laughs> women, the three U's for women. They feel unseen. A woman will walk away from a relationship or turn sour in a relationship if and when she feels unseen, not understood, and or unsafe. And unsafe could be physical, emotional, you know, mental, mentally unsafe, okay? And that it, for a man, he will walk away from a relationship or act out in a relationship if he feels criticized, that you've closed off to him or that you're trying to control him. Mm. And basically that men want to be appreciated, acknowledged and seen. They wanna feel like you like them, but, but that they're liked by the woman that they're with or by their partner. And here we're talking about women and men, but it also refers to male and female energy, you know, so wherever that lies in the spectrum of relationships. 
And that a man, if a man feels that, that we're closed off to him, that it will turn him away. So I thought about that and think in talking about like the conversation about having walls up and our own fear and kind of the things that stop us from going all the way in to a relationship or to your point, Nicole, about kind of not clearing all our bullshit out before we get into space with a man. So what do y'all think of that? That's what I want to know. (laughs) That's juicy, right? That's interesting. You said what the, you said what the, sorry. Go, Amy. You said what the men wanted. You said what turns them off. And then you said what the men wanted. No, just that men want to feel that for a man, he wants to feel appreciated, acknowledged and seen. And that he also wants to know that his woman is not closed off to him. So I'll start. Right. So for me, there have been times in my life when I've been in relationship where I've been like, oh, no, MFA. Mm, doors up Mm, you get here and you you know for whatever reason right and it could be completely justified and that's typically where the relationship starts to go sour so whether I believe that he provoked my closing my door to him or not I know that that's a point where the relationship goes into a different direction I also know on the flip side of that, that what turns a man on is when I have been willing to completely open myself up to a man, right? And for me, it's like, if you're there, if you're that dude that I'm going to open myself up to, I'm open, right? I'm open as long as I feel safe. You know, if I look at my own, like as long as I feel seen, understood and safe, I can open myself up. And so when I heard this, and again, I'll give credit to Tony Robbins because he's the one that I heard this from, although I've heard this other places as well, it really explained some of the things that have happened that I've observed that have happened in relationship where it's like, oh, really, MFA? I don't feel emotionally safe. I'm closing my doors. And then he's like, really? You're closed to me? I'm, you know, so it's like this dance that we do, but I felt like I believe that this is like a really good kind of summation of the dynamic and interplay and dance that we do. So I have to say, um, I'm not trying to be like contradictory. You can be whatever. And I, I, I'm I'm trying to separate my feelings about Tony Robbins from how I feel about right conversation. Right. Because it's not about Tony Robbins. Yeah. So here's the thing. When you first ask that question, like what men want and what women want, the answer that popped in my head is they want the same thing, which is get their needs met. I believe like everybody wants to get their needs met. So this list is basically like men need this, women need this, which I don't think is that simple. Okay. And I don't like the approach of like how to not lose someone, right? Like, oh, a man's gonna leave if he feels this. So for me, I would flip it like. Instead of like, oh, if you criticize a man, he's going to leave. It's like, okay, so I better not criticize. What about focusing on what that person needs? Like they need uh, acknowledgement. Like I think everybody needs acknowledgement. Um, They need openness. They need partnership, right? So like, I would love to take this list and change it into what does that person need and actually have that conversation with somebody about what their needs are. And then everybody's getting what they want. Well, yes. Girl, you know that I didn't say that, right? You know that that's not what I said. No, I know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know. So I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying like. It's really ruffled though, Nicole, because. I was, really? I want to hear this. Because it's the, 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 I think maybe it's just the phrasing or the framing, I should say, right. Of putting things into columns of like men, women feel this, feel that don't feel this, Mm -hmm. don't feel that. I think it's, it's like Nicole saying, like, we all want those same things. You know, I think you agree as well. It's like, we all want the same things. It's just a matter of like, whenever someone's button gets pushed a certain way, you know, or the buzzword, you know, we get triggered by something like criticism is huge for me. I don't like feeling criticized. She's a life path five. You all just so you know, look it up. 
And she knows because she's a machine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> because I'm also a life path five. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put your thumb on me. Um, <laughs> so the, exactly. It's all of this. So any, you know, it could just be, and then there are like phases in life where different things touch you in different ways and you don't want those things, but yeah, you def- those are things are foundational needs, if you will, yeah. to feel seen, yeah. to feel heard, to feel open and, and have somebody be receptive to that. I think that's- I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, and I, I was going to say, I, those are, all of those things are important to me. So, <laughs> and, um, and I also agree with you, Virgin. I don't like, to, and, and Nicole, you too. I don't like to feel like it's categorized between men and women. And Lasan, you said that right from the beginning, like female energy and male energy. But I went to this group event um, and this woman said like, men are from Mars, women are from Venus and men do this and men do, and I just walked out. It was so rude. I was right in front, but I just walked out. <laughs> From the front row, right? <laughs> you. No. <laughs> so I'll reframe it. People, people want to feel seen, understood, safe, accepted. I'm flipping criticized to accepted. Um, that the person that they're with is open to them and free, which is the flip side of controlled. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. I love it. Is that what we want? Yeah. I know that's what I want. That's what I want. Like the moment that I feel like something has happened that makes me have to close myself off from you, I start snowballing. And snowballing for me is like, oh, you don't put the top back on the toothpaste. Oh, you, <laughs> oh, you didn't say off with you. your head. Off with your head. No, just like, oh, oh. Oh, you didn't do it. Just like gets bigger and bigger and bigger for me. Okay. So Anything here's, else? Here's on what I here's yep. what I would say. I would say there have been times where I have taken stock. Maybe my birthdays, right? Taken stock of where I am, the work that I've done, how I've grown, how I've evolved. You know, from my twenties to my thirties to my forties, and um, and said to myself, I'm glad that I didn't get into a committed relationship in my earlier years because I would pick so different now Mm. than what I would have picked in my 20s, in my 30s, right? What I would have been attracted to back then versus what I would be attracted to now looks extremely different, right? And so, um, you know, now I I think about what I would want to, what kind of relationship would I, would I want to be with? What would attract me? And it would be someone who's got wisdom, a sense of humor, um, someone that I would say to myself, oh, I can't wait to talk to him and get his perspective. And I've dated guys where I tried to get their perspective and got nowhere, was very frustrated. And because of that, I felt unseen and misunderstood, Mm -hmm. right? It Mm -hmm. didn't have anything to do with him being a guy or me being a woman. It, It was just that we were not um, at the, in the same station in life, we, we didn't have, we didn't work on ourselves equally, you know, things of that nature. So I I would say, um, that's what these things kind of make me think of is I'm glad I didn't pick too young. Um, and, and, um, because it would, it would look drastically different, Mm -hmm. drastically different. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited that I'm still single and still get to pick. <laughs> yes. Me too. <laughs> reframe. <laughs> That's the coaches that are on this call. It's a reframe. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think also, you know, you get to a point where there's a difference between looking at that other person and looking at yourself, you know, and it's like, what do I want in a man? I remember Janelle, you and I, at a restaurant in Jersey City many years ago, working on a list of a list for the kind of person, you know, it was like a group effort. And we were like coming up with this list of like, you know, the attributes of a dude. And it's kind of interesting because I look at that today and it's like, yeah, that's all good, but 
it's deeper than that right? It's like, who do I want to be as a woman in a relationship? I want to feel all the things we just talked about, right? I want to feel seen. I want to feel loved and cared for and blah, 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 whatever. But back then it was like, what size is this shoe? He used to be super hot. (laughs) And so that when my kids come out, they look like both of us and they're really cute. (laughs) Really cute. All the best parts of both of us. And he earns X and he does that and does this. And some of those things are important, but it's deeper than that. Cause it's like, you know, this is like how you're going to spend so much of your time. And this is the person that you're going to trust your, you know, your, your personal life to. And that's a big freaking deal. You know, right. Are you going to talk about uh, avatars? Let's do it. You just did. <laughs> I, let's, I think you should share your process and what that is. Yes, let's, because I need let's, an avatar. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. Okay, should we talk about that over narcissism and wifey material? Yeah. More wifey material, done, period. Okay, I know we're coming up on seven and I know Viet Hen, you have a hard stop, Yes. right? So yes. I will let you choose because you have you're popping off in a minute so wifey material narcissism or avatar um narcissism keeps coming up i don't want to give it energy but i feel like i know that's i i like the topic but i could go for days on that so i'm like it's just like it's like takes me back I think I don't like can the I, idea of like can I say what I have to say person. about narcissism can I just yes. say what I have to say can about we get it? some final thoughts on narcissism seriously here is my final thought Lisan is speaking on narcissism <laughs> you know how a person can be a total jackass right? They just do all the wrong things, all the evil things. They're selfish. They're, you know, manipulative. They are doing all the stupid shit that you hate. And then the stupid shit that you love to talk about that you hate. And that's all good. But here's the thing, ladies, and this is for ladies. I'm just going to say this because I hear women making reference to narcissism more than I hear men. And it could be that I'm missing a whole conversation, but I can just, I'm just saying, right? The complaint that I hear most often is he's selfish. He's not thinking about me. He isn't um, giving me the time of day that I want him to give. He's playing games with me where he's saying this, but he really means that. And my response to that is that when you feel that the person is betraying you and when that's your major complaint, the truth of the matter is that you have betrayed yourself. That part. <laughs> that I agree. And not to cut when you. Yeah. you are in a situation where another person has the ability to pull your strings and move your strings ab- around in a way that has you bottom lining it to narcissism. So that doesn't speak to what the person is doing and whether what that person is doing is right or wrong, whether that person's an asshole or not. At the end of the day, live in a way that sets yourself up for success. Live in a way that has you loving yourself and listening to yourself. Because for every single person that puts the negativity of their relationship on a, and I'm putting this in air quotes for the podcast, narcissist, you had to have shut yourself down. You had to have told yourself to be quiet. You had to have ignored something that's happening on the inside of you in order for you to have been in that relationship with that narcissist, whether you're willing to admit it or not. Or whether you're aware of it too, because I think some of our like past experiences, traumas, et cetera, like Mm -hmm. set us up to be more susceptible to people like that. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, and I want to just disclaim as well, because I yeah. know this conversation can get problematic and, and, and we're talking about someone who's in a predominantly healthy relationship, not an abusive one or something like mm-hmm. that, because mm-hmm. there's definitely situations where that's the case and, and leaving a narcissist can be 
more difficult than what we're talking about, which is where, you know, you do have choice and et cetera, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I just, I think I even the labeling of narcissism, I think that sometimes we, as people, we point to other people and it's like that person does this and that person does that and that person didn't do this. And I think that all, and I believe that those things can be true. Like really that's what's happening. I don't doubt that. And there has to be some personal accountability for what we're allowing in our world. You know, you can't, you know, I've had relationships where, you know, and I've kind of evolved, right? And I've had relationships where I'm just like, he's a jerk. He's an ass. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Or he did this or whatever, right? And all that's true and good, but there's no way that a person could be in your world and acting out that kind of behavior without you being complicit, without me having been complicit on some level. And I'm not talking about like the dude shows up or the person shows up, they're screwed up. You turn around and you're like, oh, I don't want to be with you. I'm not talking about that, right? Because sometimes you just encounter people who just don't vibe with you or you know do the thing that you don't want them to do. What I'm talking about is when you're in that relationship over a period of time, you have to be accountable for what's happening in your world. I agree, um, narcissism. But, but like really quick, I think it also depends on the stage that person is in their life. And if we're talking about women, a lot of women are in vulnerable, uh, in a vulnerable place in their life where narcissists are not, it's hard to just, it's easier said than done. Like, okay, how could you allow this, right? But once feelings get involved and then someone's involved in your feelings and when you start to walk away, because narcissists are known for being dangerous people when you do walk away. It's kind of like a web. It's like Charlotte's web. So I think it depends on what stage that person is in their life. And Absolutely. I mean, and like I said, yeah, they can be a jerk. They can be an asshole. They can be all of that. But once you're already in it, because I myself have been in like abusive relationships, it's hard to just be like, like a light switch, like on and off. Like, There's okay, no judgment. Really yeah no 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 no. there's no judge yeah there's no judgment it's you know there's no judgment there's no like it's super easy it's just an invitation to be aware of our role in the situations that we're living within yeah it's accountability. Invita- yeah it's just an invitation to consider that we actually really do have the ability to decide what's a yes and a no in mm-hmm. our own lives that's all I'm yeah. saying, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like agree. it's not a bad, I, I have been in situations yeah. with people where I'm like, oh, he's doing this. So he's doing that. It's super sad. You know, I've been in situations like that. So there's no judgment about it. It's just the thing that brought me to a place of power in the situation was a recognition and awareness that as much as I was pointing to that other person for having betrayed me or having created discomfort in my life that as much as I was able to point to that person I had some accountability to myself there are ways that I was betraying myself because there's no way that another person can betray you without you betraying yourself on some level and I and again there's nothing that's absolute sometimes you're just walking down the street and some shit happens and you have to deal with it but it's what you do in that situation and how you you know, whether you're willing to see the truth about what's going on or not. And, and I said this to somebody the other day, I said, um, how could someone say they want respect, but then don't respect themselves and not respecting yourself is allowing treatment like that or allowing people to come in your space and not treat you accordingly. And so now what I, you know, what I know now from previous situations is, is that if I say I love myself so much and I respect myself there are there are boundaries for every relationship friendship whether it's family a spouse a partner whatever that looks like but if I'm allowing you to cross over those boundaries I'm saying I'm now mistreating myself for saying that it's okay right and there's nothing wrong that's not like a yeah you're doing something bad you're mistreating yourself it's like ooh. How do I treat myself better? How do I open to myself? How do I not judge myself? How do I make myself safe and understand myself and make sure that I'm really seeing myself? You know? That's a better way to put it. (laughs) 
Yeah. So I'm just going to give a last thought on that because I got to go. But this has been so much fun. I wish I could stay. But just to echo. I know. Uh, we'll only be on for a few more minutes because I know we're holding I know I gave you guys a half an hour of my technical nonsense Um, (laughs) so we won't stay on much longer because I know it's a long day uh, in the middle of a work day for all of us Uh, but thank you what's your last word my last words um just that like like anything like we're all talking about being at different phases are in our lives and things like that and over time we we fine-tune things and our intuition is one of those and it's it's such a big thing to actually start listening and you get better at it you get more clear mm-hmm. and even when it comes to these you know the energies that come our way we learn how to dispel them a lot quicker like i'm, I'm not mad at nicole for having that strong filter and being like no nope, nope, what is it ah next like <laughs> because ah. that has to be that's kind of the fun of it i think is is learning when things are not good for us and feeling untouchable when you know you're not bothered by it like i have a friend who's always like i'm unbothered that's it's great that's a beautiful thing so before you bounce i have a question uh in the in the and i know that you're in a relationship you said that you're in a relationship in that area of your life what do you want for and from yourself for and from myself. next what do you want for and from yourself next next oh or like like you know moving forward yeah i i'm experiencing something where i get to show up as i want to say like 90 percent of myself right now which is really great and moving forward i just i want more of that and to retain my core self just throughout like mm. as, as we go through the phases and, you know, whatever that means, like, I don't have any like hard milestones. It's more of like, as we get closer and more intertwined, right? Because you don't just date someone, you date their family, you date their friends, like you become more, you know, as Jada put it, entangled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't want my personality to become entangled. I, I want to preserve as much myself. Mm as possible just and i see that being the wave so i'm excited about it okay yeah thank you okay thank you have fun ladies so i'm gonna ask that question and then we're all gonna bounce because i don't want to hold this up too long uh thank you vietan i love you we have a she left but i listened to a podcast episode that vietan and i recorded back in September. It was actually recorded on Joseph's birthday, my son's birthday, September 28th. And it was us seeing each other for the first time after not seeing each other since last January. It was an amazing conversation. Amazing. So I think it's going to be released in a couple of weeks, but um, I was going to like tell her how much I loved her from having listened to that. (laughs) Gone. So whatever. Um, Okay. Virginia. Same question. What do you want for and from yourself? Um, Freedom and stability. Okay. Janelle. Um, Fun and development. Shade. For and from myself, I would like Come back to me. <laughs> Still thinking Nicole. of my words. <laughs> Nicole. For myself, I would like partnership. And from myself, I would like trust. Mm. Amy. Oh, gosh. What is it for and from? What do you want for and from yourself? <sighs> For myself, I would like um, some stability. For myself, some ease. Okay. Shade? Um, For myself, I would like fun. Mm -hmm. And from myself, consistency. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For myself... I want to continue to dance and I want love and fun 
and ease and adventure. And from myself, I want uh, authenticity and vulnerability and to be heart forward. Love that. Right? Okay, so again, in the interest of time, I know this is Thursday night and we're all like, we've all been working and doing our thing all day. Any, so we didn't get to the wifey material topic and I'm hoping, yeah, or the avatar. So the avatar, I'll just talk about that really quickly. Um, It's really important to know what you want. And that's true in every area of your life. You know, um, it's true even for those who have gone through, you know, who own businesses or who and or who are in a corporate environment. You always start things off with clarity about what your goals and objectives are. And it's really important, even in the area of love that seems to be so ambiguous and so romantic and so creative, it's really important to be clear about what you actually want. And that's really what an avatar is. You know, it is taking the time to invest some time and thought and creativity and spiritual connection into the thing that you want in one of the most personal areas of your life, which is the area of romantic relationship. Um, And so that's what that's about. And we can talk about that at a future time. But what I'm, and what I'm suggesting is that you focus on what you want and not on what you don't want. And so often we're like, I don't want a person who's a jerk. I don't want a person who's going to do this to me or that to me, or I don't want a person who's going to disrespect me or whatever the things are. And all that does is keep you in the energy of what you don't want, the bullshit, right? So I'm suggesting through my own experience, and it works, that you focus on what you want not only in the area of love and romance, but in in all the areas of your life, focus on what you want. Don't focus on your fear, focus on your wants, on your love, focus on your desires, focus on your dreams, you know? And there are no absolutes and there's nothing, there's no crystal ball. And the chances of getting what you want are so profoundly better when you focus in the area that you truly want to be in versus on all the crap and bullshit that's out there. So that's kind of the avatar thing. I'll talk more about it later, but that's kind of the bottom line of the whole thing. I love each and every one of you ladies. I really do. And you all know me and I know each one of you and we've all had so much fun together and I'm so grateful. Um, to be on this journey of life, you know, through relationships, through, you know, fun, the tears, you know, around business, around our personal lives, and just sometimes just holding each other up because we're going through some really fucked up shit. I love you ladies so much. And I know that, you know, an hour out of your time or an hour and a half shit, almost two hours out of your time. I know it's a big chunk because I know you're all super, super busy. Um, Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for sharing. And I hope that this, what we talked about is a value to someone out there who's just trying to figure their shit out. Uh, Last words, we'll do a really quick round for last words. Any advice that you have for people who are looking for a quality relationship? Virginia, I'll start with you. Start with the person hasn't been in a relationship in five years. (laughs) Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, my advice is take some time off to really understand yourself and get to know yourself better so that you can then know, have a better idea of what you want. 1000% agree. And I've had a time. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. You're enjoying this time. I I had a long time where I was just like, Lisan, you know what? What's going on up in here? Like you're like, blah, blah, blah. Like what's happening in here? Let's learn how to treat yourself well. And it was once I really locked that in because I love me, you know, I love me. I'm a trip, you know, and um, that's been the secret sauce for me. Shade, last words. 
Um, I want to say thank you for having me on here. This is always fun connecting with you and the rest of the ladies. We're going to need a part two because I can talk about this forever. <laughs> figure that out. Yeah. Um, last word. It's similar to what I said in the beginning. And it's honestly what I'm learning now because I've really been in back-to-back relationships since high school. Um, I'd never really took the time for myself. So now I, um, I'm doing that. And I think it's important for people who are looking for love. My advice would be don't look for it right now. Like mm. focus on yourself. Um, like this morning I woke up and I said, I want to take myself on a few dates. So I booked um, a paint and sip class. I booked a, a axe throwing class, a yoga class. I booked um I booked tickets for an event for jazz at the High Museum of Art in Atlanta next month. So I would say date yourself, I'll focus on being whole, finding your purpose, focus on that career, book that trip. I would just like live life authentically, have fun with your girlfriends, have fun with your family and yourself. And that person will show up um, when the universe or God feels like you're ready for that person. Love that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Nicole? Yeah, first, Lisan, I just want to acknowledge you for putting this together. Um, the fact that you put this together and wanted to have this conversation, it just really shines a light on who you are on the planet and who you are for women and for people. And I just really cherish you and I love you. And I know you want everyone to have the relationship of their dreams. So that just, you just have such a big heart. So thank you for hosting this and bringing us all together. I met some new people tonight, so that's awesome. Um, My advice is to hang in there. Mm. Um, You know, I definitely went through a phase of dating people and it not working out, dating, not working out, where every single time I was just like, "Ah, what did I do? What's wrong? What happened? And now I'm like, that's a wrap, moving on. (laughs) You know, it's just like on to the next because there's always, my experience is each person I meet, I'm like, oh, that's why that other person didn't work oh, out. Oh, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you get just closer and closer to what you want. Um, and sometimes what you think you want and the reality of experiencing people and, and dating is, a, it's a little different. So you can kind of, you know, learn from every experience. So just hang in there, like, just keep going. Don't get defeated. And get a lot of support from your girlfriends. And if you don't yes. have girlfriends to get support from, text me or Lisan, <laughs> and we'll add you to our little group text. Absolutely. Get what Absolutely. You add me. <laughs> don't isolate. So I love, I'm so happy you mentioned that. Like, don't isolate. It's like one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made in the area. Cause I'm all like, I can't fail on anything. And so I would like isolate and not tell anyone the bullshit. And it's so different when you're like, girl, let me tell you what happened, right? Because <laughs> your girlfriends are going to hold you up. And if you, if you don't have a tribe of girlfriends that are going to hold you up, find new friends, yeah. you know, come over, something here. And, come over here. We got you for real, mm-hmm. for real, for real. Amy. Ah, uh, um, okay. Stop wasting years of your life on potential trying to make Mm. someone who they're not going to possibly be stick Mm. to the three month rule obsession and all of the infatuation runs out in three months after that you're seeing someone for who they really are and if you don't like it go to the next one three month Mm. rule three month three month rule three month rule and move it on don't waste any more time we're all yeah we're all we're all pushing like 20s (laughs) 19 thank you 19 (laughs) I'll be 20 in three years. Uh, <laughs> Janelle. Thanks for, this is fun. Thanks for having me on. Um, and I love what was said thus far. Um, I have a lot of friends who spent a lot of time chained to their desk, pursuing their careers and not really paying attention to a love life. And so um, if I were to have any advice, I would say do what Sade just said. Um, take yourself out because if you're taking yourself out you're making yourself available for those who are out there looking for you yeah you can't find that person chained to your desk working and and solely pursuing your career and um, you have to go through the process it's a research and development process 
And if it doesn't work out and you hurt, at least you feel and mm. you move on. And the closed door means that that wasn't the one that was set aside for you. It means that there's someone else that's a closer match to what you were actually looking for. So feel the feelings yeah. and get back into it. So if I were to do my life over again, I think I would have focused more on having a love life versus the time that I spent on pursuing a career. Yeah. Wow. I love you ladies so much. We love you so love much. You. Thank you for doing this with me. I also just realized that I didn't record this, but what the fuck, whatever. <laughs> I you know, I noticed that in the beginning that it wasn't recording, but I was Why like, did you oh, tell me? I oh. found something. Did you see all my technical oh. faux pas? <laughs> did you see how screwed up I, I was on the technical kept, side? You kept mentioning someone's name, like, oh, so-and-so told me to do this, and so-and-so. So I figured you had some other, like, mechanism that was recording. I just sat here, like, in the middle of Sade talking, <laughs> I glanced, and I'm like, live on Facebook, what the fuck about the recording part? And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I didn't record. Well, you should be able to get it back since it's live on thinking. Facebook, it's saved on Facebook. Ryan's going to have to figure something out. I'm just going to give him, I don't it even should know. Be. It doesn't be matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because we just did it, and that's all good. <laughs> I love, I love you ladies, and Nicole, my desire and wish is that people have phenomenal relationships. And as you all know, because you all know me and you've all walked my path with me, it starts with a phenomenal relationship with yourself. So yes, yes, yes. Get out there, get yourself into the best romantic relationship that you can possibly be in. And your relationship and the quality of your relationship with another person is but a reflection of the relationship that you are in with yourself. So if you're in a relationship with yourself where you are filling yourself up with love, where you are authentic and vulnerable and willing to do the work, then there's nothing but that that's going to come your way. You know, so for me, it's absolutely, I want everybody to have a phenomenal relationship with yourself because then all the rest of it comes in. I love you ladies so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna have to hang it up because I don't know how to end it and not <laughs> cut us all off. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Good love night, you. I'll talk thank to you, you all soon. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you.